तो हमने की पॉइंट यू हैव टू राइट ऑल द इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ऑल दी ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट फॉर ज्वाइनिंग क्लास टूडे एंड आर इन पर्सन स्टूडेंट्स आर हियर ओके सो वेलकम टू एवरी वन विल बिगिन क्लास कैन आई आस्क वन ऑफ आर ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स टू प्लीज लीड अस इन प्रेयर Karen can you please lead us in prayer Yes pastor God every father we thank you Jesus for this day and thank you for bringing us here together and as we learn from your word lord i pray to you that you would teach us and speak to us through your servant and help us lord to learn more about your word more about your faithfulness more about your goodness lord and lead us and guide us throughout this day lord in jesus name i ask in faith amen uh sorry karen we i couldn't hear you because i just realized that i don't have the access to <laughs> to uh the audio here from the students because we are connected to something that is um you know an m audio which just has an output but no input So sorry about that. Okay. Anyways, can I ask one of our in-person students to come up here and lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Charan, you want to come? Sorry, Vimal, come. You want to lead us in prayer? Okay. This is uh, Vimal, and he is from Uttarakhand, uh, and he is going to lead us in prayer. Yeah. Thank you Lord thank you Jesus we lift up your name in this morning thank you so much for another day in our lives Lord Jesus i pray whatever we learn in this session Lord Jesus uh, Lord help us to uh, receive it uh, receive it Lord Jesus and Lord help us to uh, know everything you want us to lord jesus help us lord jesus and help every student to grow spiritually in your knowledge and in your wisdom lord jesus thank you so much lord you heard my prayer all glory belongs to your name and your name be lifted high your name be exalted oh lord in jesus name we pray amen thank you viman okay so today uh, we are going to begin looking at um, uh, receiving god's guidance for our lives okay um so for all the um online students you know you could um, uh i've already okay just one minute just give me a second Okay for all the online students I posted uh, the PDF copy of uh, receiving god's guidance on the stream page so you can go and access the uh, the PDF copy of this book receiving god's guidance if you're not able to access it from the stream page where I you know I post the link for you to enter class I posted the PDF copy of this book if you're not able to access it then you can go to uh, you know www.apc uh, dot Uh, apcwo.org 
and you can look at um, you know resources and then books english books and that you will find receiving god's guidance for your life and you can follow that from there um uh, but you know i've already posted on our stream page where i have posted i post the link for our class so you could access the book given from that page are you all able to access it Okay, thank you, Karen. Okay, so we will look at uh, chapter one in uh, receiving God's guide. Uh, you know, receiving God's guidance for our lives. Uh, we need God's guidance in various areas of our life, whether it is small matters or big matters. Okay, um, or whether we make small decisions or big decisions, we need God's guidance in our lives. uh small decisions you know are uh, basic everyday decisions you know what to say what to do uh, how to react uh, what to do in a situation big situations is basically like if it's you're a student then you know uh, which course to take which college to join um you know um after you finish your studies you know one minute there's somebody who wants to okay um you know which college to join uh, where you uh, you know which course to take and once you finish with your um, uh, studies you know which um, organization which uh, company to join where you're going to live which church you want to be a part of fellowship uh, with you know um, who you're going to marry so all of these things uh, you know um, you need guidance with okay and um, you know we have the wonderful privilege as believers as god's children we have the wonderful privilege uh, to receive god's guidance in every step of the way okay in our lives um, the bible does not give us a formula for god's guidance does not tell us this is what we need to do uh, but you know the bible does tell us uh, and help us and how we can receive guidance in our lives so we're going to look in this book we're going to look at 11 different ways uh, you know given in the bible how god releases his guidance in our lives so um, it is his word the holy spirit uh, the voice of the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit uh, god reveals uh, or guides us through dreams and visions through prophecies through angels through godly counsel a renewed mind Uh, the times and seasons that we go to and the circumstances that god divinely orchestrates and some of these we've already most of these we've already looked at in fulfilling god's purpose for our life okay but we look at it in a little more uh, uh, in depth way in these chapters that we are going to study in this book uh, receiving god's guidance for your life okay now um god promises to lead us and guide us this is a wonderful assurance so we don't have to go through life you know clueless uh, wondering where we're going what is happening to our lives what we need to do uh we have this wonderful assurance that you know god leads us and um guides us and god is very very interested in the decisions that we make the steps that we uh take and uh, because he's very interested in the decisions that we make and the steps that we take you know he's promised his guidance uh, let's look at psalm chapter 37 verses 23 and 24 uh it's there in your book can somebody read that please psalm 37 23 and 24 yes now for the purpose and Yes so here he says steps of a good man so good man here means a courageous man you know a, a valiant man a man who is a warrior okay uh, and he says that our steps are ordered ordered means what god directs our steps he makes our steps perfect he makes them firm where we can stand and walk properly that we don't fall down okay and so we see that god takes pleasure in uh, the way we are going okay the way a person is going now actually the amplified version up uh, you know puts it very well it says god busies himself with every step that we take god is very busy with every step that we take every little step that we take you know god is very very uh, interested he's busy with what steps that we are 
uh, taking. So God is very interested in our lives. He's interested in the steps we take, uh, in the path we choose, in the decisions that we make. Um, and even if this verse says, even if we stumble and fall, even if we fail, even if we uh, make a mistake, you know, uh, it's, we are not doomed for the rest of our lives. Okay? Uh, God upholds us. Uh, uh, it says God upholds us with his righteous right hand. That's what we read in Psalm ch chapter 37, verse 24. Uh, but the Amplified Bible says it very nicely. It says the Lord grasps the hands in support and upholds him. So a person who's falling, who's facing failure, who's going the wrong way, God upholds us, grasps, grasps us. Means when you're falling, you know, when you hold somebody, you Hold, take hold of their hand, you grasp their hand, you take hold of their hand, you support them, and you know, God upholds us. You know, the word of God also says God upholds us with his righteous right hand. He's holding us in his hand, which means, you know, we can um, not fall down, um, that he will guide us and lead us every step of the way. Can somebody read Psalm 32, verse 8 and 9? Thank you. So here we have a wonderful assurance of God's guidance where God says, I will instruct you. Okay, I think it's my uh, phone. I, it's not on silent. Okay, God says, I will ex uh, instruct you. That means God is, um, you know, telling us the Hebrew word. If you look at the Hebrew word, it means that God, uh, you know, uh, will make you intelligent, prudent, and wise and give you the skills so that you can have good success. Okay, so the word instruct, God says, I will instruct you means God says, you know, uh, the Hebrew word is, you know, he will make us intelligent, he will make us prudent, he will make us wise, he will give us the skills that we need uh, to have good success in life, okay? Then it also gives us a wonderful promise here, God says, I will teach you. Now the Hebrew word here means, you know, God says, I will point a finger, I will show you exactly what you need to do, where you need to go, show you the exact way. So God is pointing a finger. Uh, and actually this Hebrew word has a picture of, you know, a person trying to shoot an arrow and the exact target. Okay, so which means that God has the target in mind. That means God knows where you need to go, what you need to do, what you need to study, which career you need to uh, choose. And then he will point a finger towards that direction. He will show you, he will lead you and guide you. And the word guide here in um, means, in Hebrew means, he will counsel you. Okay. He will give you advice. So the Lord has promised to teach, guide and uh, instruct us. But you know, uh, this verse, you know, it promises us, promises us that God will instruct us, teach us and guide us. But we need to do something. There needs to be a response from our part. So what is the response? It's saying, don't be like the horse or the mule. Mule is what? Donkey. Don't be like the horse and the donkey. You know, that must be harnessed. That means, you know, they must be controlled. Otherwise, they will run before you or they will be lazy and walk behind you. Okay. So what it's saying here is we should not, we should avoid these postures. Means we should not run ahead of God. We should not lag behind. Instead, we need to come along with God and work along with him, you know, uh, to do what he has instructed us to do, what he has promised us to do, where, sorry, where he's leading us and where he's guiding us. And we need to do it along with God. Okay. Psalm 50, uh, 25 verse 12. Can somebody read that, please? We'll also look at what we learn about receiving God's guidance from Psalm 25 verse 12. Okay, so here he says we need to walk in reverence towards God. Okay, only then God will teach us the way we need to go. Now, the Good News Bible puts it very nicely those who have reverence for the Lord will learn from Him the path they should follow. 
Okay, so basically reverence means what? You know, when you are willing to obey God, when you're willing to do His will, when you're willing to take His instructions, when you're uh, willing to do take His instructions seriously, not, you know, uh, take it as a joke or playfully. It says when we have that kind of reverence towards God, it's only then will He be willing to teach us and show us the way that we need to go. Okay, so we'll just look at uh, the revelation of God's will. Okay, so before we um, uh, look at you know uh, uh, various ways God guides us through Scripture, let us let us look at how God reveals His work and uh, will to us, and let's you know lay some uh, important foundational truths in relationship with God's will and guidance in our lives. The first one is God's will guidance and leading is always consistent with his nature god will not tell us to do anything that is ag against his nature okay so you know uh, god is unchanging he does not change we read this in malachi chapter 3 verse 6 uh, and james chapter 3 verse 7 says he's a father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of Turning, okay. God's nature is constant. He does not change. You know, whatever His will, His purpose, He wants to do, He will do that. Uh, and His, um, you know, His whatever He plans and purposes is according with His nature, okay. And His will is always according in harmony, in unity, in oneness with His um, nature. So God will not tell us to do anything that is against His nature okay for example uh, we can't say god told me to lie even though it's a some you know we have white lie and dark lie okay black lie white lie is you know you tell a lie to save somebody and the people say it's a good lie it's okay we have a good lie and a bad lie okay but for god lie is a lie okay he's a god who hates lies and he you know, he does not want us to lie. So you, we can't say, no, God told me to say this lies to save somebody or to save them from the situation. No, God cannot uh, do anything that contradicts his nature. Okay. So, you know, we can't say that, uh, you know, God has asked me not to forgive this person, you know, or to get back to that person. We can't say that because we know that God is a Forgiving God and He is a loving God. God is love. First John tells us about that. God is love. So He will always tell us to love somebody and not hate them and not be unforgiving because God is always forgiving. Okay. So God will not do anything against His nature. So if you want to know, is this God's will for my life? You need to see whether it is according to His nature. Then you will know, yeah, this is God's will for my life. The second one is God's will, guidance, and leading will always be consistent with His word. God will always lead us according to His word. He will never do anything that contradicts, tell us to do anything that contradicts His word. Now, for example, you know, all of you are young here in this class, uh, but some of them are online students, maybe already married. But, you know, um, we cannot say, no, God is asking me, I fell in love with this unbeliever. God is asking me to marry this unbeliever and God will change him or her later on. No. What does the word of God say? Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That means the standard is there. You know, don't marry an unbeliever. And when we know this, we cannot go back and ask God, God, is this your will that I marry this person? See, it's because no answer will come. God is saying, I already have written my word. You cannot marry this person. Okay, so there are uh, things that God does not do against what He's already revealed in His Word. Okay, so one thing which we sometimes, you know, the devil can trick us. So one thing that we can do is go back and see if this is according to God's nature, consistent with God's nature, consistent with His Word. Now, sometimes God may lead us to do things that contradicts our understanding of His Word. Okay. Sometimes we understand God's word in a, in a certain way, but God will tell us to do something that will contradict our understanding of God's word. For example, you know, keeping the Sabbath. You know, uh, the, we know the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Old Testament uh, uh, people, they were very strict in keeping the Sabbath. Okay, but what does Jesus do? On the other hand, we see Jesus healing people on the 
Sabbath. He was criticized for that. They tried to find fault with him. We also see that his uh, disciples were plucking grain on the Sabbath day and you know what they were eating. Matthew chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. And when they said, you know, the, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees were very angry. He said, how can you do this on the Sabbath? What did Jesus say? Jesus explained that he was Lord even of the Sabbath. Okay, so Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. Yes, there are some, you know, why was Sabbath made? You know, for certain certain things that you just get a day of rest, a day when you just spend time, you know, uh, in God's presence, trying to refresh yourself, trying to renew yourself so that you can, you know, you, uh, you will be charged up, your battery will be charged up, so to say, uh, to run the rest of the week with all the challenges. So one day you just rest, uh, just physically rest, rest in God, um, you know, just um, uh, receive uh, from you know uh, from his word receive from his presence so that you will be you know equipped and strengthened to face another new day let's uh, another new week okay let's look at another example you know um uh, apostle peter you know and the early church um you know they were not preaching to the gentiles they thought the scripture was only for the jews then what happened to peter you know, one day he was very hungry. He was up on the terrace and, you know, he was waiting for uh, the meal to be cooked. And then he falls into a trance and he sees a white sheet with all unclean animals. Okay, do you all know this? Acts chapter uh, 9 and 10. Okay, uh, where all unclean animals were there. And what does God tell uh, Peter? Get up, kill and eat. And he says, how can I eat God? See, and then what does God say? Don't call what God has made clean as unclean. And then he gives him instructions. There are men waiting with you. Don't ask any questions. Just go. And so he was led to whose house? Cornelius' house. And Cornelius was a Gentile. And already God had spoken to Cornelius that, you know, Peter is going to come. He's arranged a meeting. And, um, you know, Peter is um, sharing the gospel with the Gentiles. And, you know, when he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the people were cut in their heart. That means, uh, you know, the people were convinced about their sin. And suddenly Peter is just standing there and preaching. And suddenly all these people start speaking in tongues. And Peter and all the Jews who went along with him are shocked. Are they, how can all these people speak in tongues? They are not Jews, they are Gentiles. See, and then, you know, that's when Peter realized the trance which God had showed him, you know, and uh, he realized that, you know, the gospel and salvation and the gifts of the Spirit is all even available for the Gentiles. Okay, so, you know, this is, God did something that contradicted his understanding of God's, Word. What was his understanding of God's word? His understanding of God's word is only the scripture for the Jews. But God contradicted that, went against his understanding. So sometimes we might have faulty understanding. Okay, that means, you know, on the, on the Sabbath, we shouldn't do any work and all of those things. If you do any work, anyone does, they're sinners, they're sinful people, you know, they'll go to hell. No. Okay, uh, there might be some people who I know there are many people who are working in in hotel industry who are working in, um, in in their jobs and they will lose their job if they don't go on Sunday, especially if they're chefs or, you know, they're working in a hotel. So, you no, know, I and they're working in a parlor or anything. I've seen them, you know, they go to their church service very early, seven o'clock, seven to eight, thirty nine. And then they go, they join their work by uh, 10 o'clock. Okay, and we can't say that, you know, they are sinful people. They are working on a Sabbath. But, you know, we, we see that they have already gone to church, spending time. But, you know, they are they're off they, their holidays on some other day and they can't do anything. They can't say, you know, we have to go to church so we won't work on a Sunday. And they're going to lose their job. And how will they support their family? Because they're just, you know, dependent on meager and they don't have a qualification. So they're working in a hotel or somewhere they have to go for their uh, job. So, you know, sometimes God contradicts our understanding of his word. That does not mean that he contradicts his word. He contradicts our understanding of his word. Sometimes we understand God's word in the wrong way and he tries to contradict that and teaches us what is right. Are you all able to understand this point? Okay. Then the third one is God promises uh, uh, are, are a revelation of God's will. 
okay the reason why god give, has given us promises in his word you know how many promises are there in god's word you know god's word has promises yes okay how many promises are there there are more than 3000 promises in god's word okay uh, and why has god promises uh, promised all of these things to us because he wants us to enjoy those promises okay it's not that he was, he's just given us those promises to be in this in the bible okay he's given us those promises so that we can you know enjoy um, his promises in our life uh, so we can understand you know uh, god's promises and an ex and his promises are an expression of his will in our lives Okay, so one of his promises is God says in Jeremiah chapter 29, he says, you know, I have plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Okay, so that is a promise and that is something that God builds for our life. He wants us to have a good future. And how does, how do we experience God's promise? How does those promises become yes and amen in our life? When we believe, okay. Receive it, okay? God's promises is, is an yes, and the amen is spoken through us for the glory of his name. So it's not only believing, it's not only trusting, but it's also confessing. It's already declaring those promises. When we declare those promises, and we say that's when we say an amen to it, we see that happening in our Life. So God's promises is not just for us to take the Bible and keep it on your head and say, okay, let all God's promises flow through my life. No, we have to know what God's promises is. And in those situations, we speak God's promise. Okay, so like if you are feeling very dull, very tired, the morning you just speak God's promise. You know, God gives strength to his people. God blesses, uh, gives strength to his people. God blesses his people with the strength. You know, uh, God uh, gives strength to the weary and those who are weak, he, you know, empowers them. So you just keep speaking God's promises over strength in your life or whether your mental peace or whether your health or whether your situation your family your children sometimes we want to see things happening in our children's life just go to the word of god take down all the promises in god's word just keep declaring god's promises sometimes you think you're just speaking it out in the air you know but just keep speaking those promises you are having a problem with finances god's provision in your life there is no unity and oneness just take all the from verses on promises Declare it over your life. You're worried about your future. What are you going to do? You know, just take God's promises and declare and speak it over your lives. Because God has given us those promises because he wants to fulfill it in our lives. Okay, God also, the last one, God desires us to know his will. Okay. God wants, uh, uh, you know, for each one of us to know what is his will. He's, we already seen this. He does not hide his will from us. His will is not a mystery. Um, you know, and he's also made provision for us to know his will. He's made it easy for us to know his will. So let's look at what Colossians chapter 1, uh, what the word of God teaches us about God's will from Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. So can somebody please read Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10, please? Thank you. So there are three important insights or three important things that we can learn from here. First, we see that Paul prayed for the people at the church at Colossae that they might be what? Filled with the knowledge of his will. Fill means what? Fill means that, you know, full. They lack nothing. They don't fall short of anything. Okay? The knowledge of his will. Okay? So as believers, you and I don't have to fall short of knowing God's will for our 
life. Okay, but what we need to do is just like Paul prayed for the church at Colossae, we also need to pray. Say, God, please fill me with the knowledge of your will. Some of you are struggling. What is God's will for my life in this area, in that area? You know, so like Paul, you just pray and say, God, fill me with the knowledge of your will. Okay, so even as we are learning these from these, uh, we'll be learning from these three books. There are many things that you can include in your prayer life. Sometimes, you know, we don't know what to pray for. We're wondering why people will pray for half an hour, one hour, when I can't even pray for five, ten minutes. Okay, so some of them, I mentioned a lot of points, you know, when we were uh, studying, receiving God's, uh, sorry, when we were looking at fulfilling God's promise for your life. Okay, even now you can add on to your prayer points. So every day you can pray and say, God, you know, uh, be, uh, help fill me with the knowledge of your will. Okay, so the knowledge in Greek means something that is more precise or it's a correct knowledge, correct, precise, to the point. No, you know, no, uh, uh, no fault, no here and there movement. It's just precise. And it's very deep and very clear knowledge. So as believers, each one of us can have full, complete, precise, correct, deep, clear knowledge of God's will. Can we say an amen to that? Amen. Yes. So we can have clear, full, deep, precise understanding of God's will for our um, lives. Okay. The second thing is, uh, you know, knowing his will comes through. How do we know his will from this verse? How do we know his will from this verse? Through wisdom and spiritual understanding. Okay. And where do we receive wisdom and spiritual understanding? Through the through the word and through the Holy Spirit. Okay. The word and the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom and spiritual understanding, but we need to grow in the wisdom and spiritual understanding of God. We can't just say, okay, God, give me wisdom and spiritual understanding in this matter. Okay. We need to spend time reading God's word because when we read, the more we read God's word, the more wisdom and the more spiritual understanding we receive. Now, why was Paul able to bring about so many deep revelations in when he was writing all these epistles. Firstly, yes, it was inspired to him by the Holy Spirit, but also it was his deep desire. Okay, he was had a deep desire to know the Old Testament laws. And hence he was, you know, he studied the Old Testament laws in a very uh, deep way. That is why when he speaks, you know, whatever epistles he writes, he's always connecting it to the Old Testament laws, Old Testament ways, you know, he's bringing Abraham, he's talking about David and, and all of the patriarchs, and he explains it. And why? Because he has such a profound understanding of the Old Testament laws. So that is why we see such profound wisdom and spiritual understanding when we read the epistles that Paul has written. Some of them we can't even understand. Right? Uh, why? Because it's not because he was a super inter, uh, intelligent uh, being, but it was because he had a desire to study God's word. The more you have a desire to study God's word, the more you will grow in wisdom and spiritual understanding. Okay? The third thing is what is the outcome? What is the outcome if we are filled with the knowledge of God's will? What is the outcome if we are growing in wisdom and spiritual understanding? Uh, this verse tells us what is the outcome. What is the first outcome? Before that, we were we walk worthy of the Lord. Okay, it's it's good to look at your Bibles, you know, because even as we are looking at uh, you know uh, reading God's word, you now the the word of God will just you know, bring in something uh, alive to you, okay? Because it's God's word, it's alive, it's active. So I like you all to open your Bibles and uh, just look at those verses so that, you know, next time when you know something, you can just quickly go to this verse. And when you look at it, it will just all what you have learned about it will come across, okay? So first thing, we walk worthy of the Lord. That means what? We live a life that is honoring in God's sight, okay? The second one is we live fully pleasing to him. That means we live a life that pleases him. Not a life that is pleasing us, pleasing the world, but we live a life that is pleasing him. The third thing is what? 
we will be fruitful in everything that we do. We will bear fruit in everything that he has called us to do. The fruit of the spirit, the, the you know, uh, we will be so successful, we'll be so blessed. That people will see and say, wow, how can this person be so blessed and so successful? It's because they have a knowledge, you know, an understanding of uh, God's will. Okay, they have wisdom and spiritual understanding as well. Okay, and what is the last thing? Increase in the knowledge of him. Okay, so we, we will increase in our knowledge of him. So all these are wonderful things, you know, as the outcomes, what, when we, uh, how, what are the outcomes, uh, you know, when we have a knowledge of his will. And the second thing is when we grow in spiritual wisdom and understanding, we have all of these outcomes. We walk worthy of the Lord. We live a life that's pleasing to him. We are fruitful in everything that we do. And we will increase in our knowledge of him. Let's consider what the word of God says in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 10 and verse 17. So can somebody please read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 10 and verse 17, please? Read, read. Seventeen also. Thank you. So here we see that, you know, uh, we are people who are in the light because we are believers. We have been brought out from darkness into God's light. And once we are in the light, we, you know, uh, we not only walk as children of the light, not mean, that means we not only live as, you know, people who belong to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, but we also display the fruit of the spirit in our lives. But he says here, we need to find out okay find out what find out means what find out means test examine prove discern figure out okay what do we need to find out what is acceptable to the lord now in english the word acceptable means okay you know in hindi it means chalta hai you know, okay or chalta hai or something that is more satisfactory. But if you look at it in the Greek, you know, it has a very deep meaning. In the Greek, it means what is fully agreeable or what is well pleasing to the Lord. So as believers, you know, we are uh, encouraged to pursue God's will for our lives and what is full, agreeable and well pleasing to God. So we are supposed to find out, God, what is your fully, what are you fully agreeable in this case in my life? Okay, what is well pleasing for you for uh, uh, for you that I that you want me to do? So we need to find out. We need to discover. That's why it says finding out, verse ten. You know, discovering what is God's will. What is fully agreeable? What is fully pleasing to God? Okay, and then he says in verse. Uh, 17, he's, uh, you know, Paul is instructing the church at Ephesus and also us. He's saying, do not be unwise. Okay. The Greek word for unwise is without reason, sel senseless, foolish, stupid, you know, uh, without uh, intelligence, being very rash. You know, some of us are very rash in making decisions. We don't think twice. We just go ahead. We do something. You know, that is being unwise. You know, uh, so he's saying, don't be senseless, don't be foolish, don't be stupid, don't be uh, rash. But he says, you know, instead we need to understand what God's will. Okay. Now the word for the Greek word for understand is to put together. Okay. Put together, join together. You know, um, uh, you know, bringing two things to together two opposing ideas together what does it mean it means that sometimes when god tells us to do something you know we have our own mindset 
we are thinking some way we want to do something god is saying do it this way no we have we want to do it this way but god is saying do it this way so what we need to do is we need to bring those two ideas together and we need to ask god and see what god is telling us and leading us and what is best we need to do that okay so you know uh, so this verse is also teaching us that when we pursue god's will for our lives we you have to use our mind you know some people become very over spiritual they leave their minds out and they only look for what the spirit of god is saying some people are the other extreme you know i already explained to you last week you know we use only our mind and we don't go with what the spirit is saying that means we follow what our logical reasoning is it says oh the logical reasoning is this can't happen the doctors told me i have this sickness this disease uh, you know i can't the holy spirit is saying just fast and pray i'll heal you you know and uh, you know don't take any uh, treatment but we go with our logical reasoning i'm not telling in all instances you need to do this but in one of instances the holy spirit can lead you to do these things and then that time you know you need to leave what your mind is saying and just follow the holy spirit and do what you know is uh, um, what god is asking you to do super naturally okay so uh, you know but most of the time god uses our minds even though he reveals his will he guides us he leads us you know he um, gives us his uh, gives us um, uh, you know he uses our mind now sometimes you know when we are counseling people or when people come to pray to ask us to pray you know uh, they want to hear what the holy spirit is telling them to do but sometimes you know um, when we are praying we don't get an answer but the holy spirit is telling us you know just be practical some of the problems that people go through is you can just give them very practical instructions like for example i've noticed when i go to north india many people come uh, you know with uh, any older people come with joint pains knee pain joint pains and all of that and i know being a gujarati i know that you know uh, <laughs> our gujaratis they love to eat potato in everything even when they make dal or they make sambar they will put potato in it in everything they'll be putting potato they know that this potato is causing that the knee pain and the joint pain because of their age as well okay so but you know they will know that but they will say please pray for my joint pain for my knee pain and for my health but they will not want to give up eating potato okay everything every vegetable everything has to have potato even if they make curd curry they will put potato in that okay so when i went to north india i know many people when i was ministering in gujarat many people came with joint pain and and i was just praying and then suddenly i just felt the holy spirit saying be practical you know it's because they're eating a lot of potato in every meal so when i ask them they say i they say, they say yes we are eating potato i ask them how many meals you eat sometimes they say three meals and says you know it's not good for your health so sometimes you have to give them practical uh, advice but sometimes people don't want to take this practical advice they say oh this person is doesn't have uh, the anointing doesn't have the leading of the holy spirit that is why they're giving us some practical uh, uh, you know knowledge and they just go and they continue doing it uh, and they get into a bigger mess okay and they are just getting themselves into a mess uh, and you know they're not being useful for the kingdom of god so sometimes we need to follow practical advice it's very important sometimes even in ministry we are so zealous to do things for god you know pastor is going house visiting and all the 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 congregation members want to feed you know nicely pastor biryani chicken this that and the pastor gets cholesterol or high bp or you know and the practical solution is what you have to cut down on all the fatty food that you're eating so you need to tell your members i'm just coming for house visit no snacks no cake no samosas no biryani no this and you have to take that you can't say you know um, you can't just leave those uh, practical instructions i'll give you one example um, there was um, uh, this great man of god who was flowing in all the gifts of the spirit and he went to meet a pastor uh, you know because his pastor had constructed a whole big uh, like an auditorium as for his church so he called this pastor to come and see him and this pastor moved mightily in all the nine gifts of the spirit so 
when he was leaving, uh, you know, you need to be careful. There is a blanket worm just on that wall behind you. If it gets in your clothes, it can, uh, you know, you can get itchy. So you can just take your shoes or something and just uh, kill it. The blanket worm on that wall. Otherwise, don't put it down. It'll again. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so what happened was this um, this pastor, you know, he saw everything. He was getting ready to go. He went to the car park, getting ready to go into his car. And you know what God tells him? Tells him, go tell this pastor two things he needs to do. First thing is he needs to respect and honor all those who are under him. All the junior pastors who are working under him needs to uh, respect and honor them and not boss over them. And the second thing he needs to do is he has to cut down on his you know, the, the 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 food that he is eating, a lot of fatty food. If he's not going to eat, uh, you know, cut down, in a few months' time, he's going to die. So this pastor, practical, right? He just goes back and tells us, this is what I receive in my spirit. I like to share this with you. You know, the pastor, this pastor did not receive that practical instruction. And in a couple of months, the pastor died. So there's no use, you know, building up this huge auditorium, having a whole church. Sometimes when you give pre people practical advice, they don't want it. Only if you say, thus says the Lord, thou shall not eat, you know, red meat. <laughs> you know, that, then they'll think that it's from God's word. They'll say, show me, Pastor, from God's word where it says. Okay. So, you know, so it's important that, you know, people are willing to take practical advice. Um then there are some things that remain unknown to us. There's not everything that God reveals to us. There's some things that, you know, God will not uh, reveal to us. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Can somebody read that, please? Deuteronomy 29, 29. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So there are things that God keeps reserved only for himself, but we must be comfortable when we don't receive answers to all our questions. You know, we can just, we'll experience God's peace that should be more than enough. That is the answer to our question. Sometimes we, we, we don't say, we, when we ask God questions, why did this happen, God? Why did you take away my child so early? Why did this divorce happen? Why did this son happen in my marriage? Why this... Uh, problem or uh, so we we won't receive answers to all our questions but sometimes it's you know some of the answers are very practical okay uh, but sometimes god does not give us answers to the why and the how and uh, all of those things but you know he'll just give us that peace the peace uh philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 the peace of god that passes all Understanding it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make known your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ uh, Jesus. And you know, when we have this peace, we just release things into God's hand and we just, uh, you know, go. So, having said all of this, you know, it clearly indicates that, um, you know, God wants us to be filled with the knowledge of His will. Uh, and hence, as far as, you know, receiving God's guidance for our life, according to his promise, you know, God will not hold back anything from his end. If you're not able to receive, there's a problem from our end. We need to check out. Uh, but in his end, God will reveal things to us. He will make known his will to us. Okay. So anyone has any questions? We just have one minute before the break, and then we'll continue after the break. Anyone has any questions? No. How can you know God's will? That's what to the word, the leading of the Holy Spirit. We look at eleven the eleven ways God guides us to know His will. Okay. We already learned, right? How to know God's will from fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Yes. Would it be wrong to rebel against parents in order to fulfill God's will? Uh, yes, sometimes we need to go against the will of our parents. The question here by Krishna Krishna is, would it be wrong to rebel against parents in order to fulfill God's will? What do you think? 
opposition yes i think it happened in my life so i can give an example from my own life when i was um, you know uh, you know uh, asking god when i was in 12th standard what he wanted me to do god said you know come into full time ministry and then i told you right i didn't get admission in colleges and finally when i asked god what is happening in my life he said remember you said you'll go to bible college and then when i told my dad he was very upset you know my dad is a very professional minded person all my sisters are highly very qualified you know they've done their phd is double ms and everything you know and my pa my father is very highly intellectual very highly qualified he wanted all of us to study well and you know i was the one who was like the black sheep in the family very playful very naughty you know so he thought i'm taking the easy way out in those days in my days you know when i'm talking about 1990s you know when i finished my schooling you know um uh, that time when you going those who go to ministry or bible college are only those people who cannot study anything else in life they are failures or dropouts you know so they'll go into the sun and my father taught in bible college you don't study anything it's you don't learn anything but he wanted me to he said you can serve god but i want you to do some degree i wanted to do bsc msc and you know study and all that but then when i wanted to go into full time ministry and i told him he was very upset and angry he did not support me see uh uh and it was very difficult for me you know but he didn't support but i had to go against his will he didn't speak to me for a couple of years and all of that he didn't support me but i just prayed and said god you show him but when he came for my graduation that's when he realized that bible college is not just simply where you go and you know just do something uh, but you learn a lot you do things and now he supports me more than anyone else in ministry so i didn't uh, fight against him i didn't argue with him of course i did what god wanted me to do i went against his will but now he knows that this was not what i chose what god wanted me and he supports me more than anyone else today okay we'll go for our break um, and uh, i hope i answered your question krisha okay okay we'll go for our break and then we'll come back 